Hi guys, Johnny Good here for Real Home Studio today, taking a look at some tricks, tips, and techniques for a better mix. Just before I dive straight in, I want to remind you to please like and subscribe, and if you've got something to say, then please do drop it in the comments box below. So I was recently asked online if I would share my mix process of a song which I'd released a couple of weeks back, and it happened to be the same song which I've been using for my How to Record a Song in a Home Studio course. Now I'm currently working on building a course on how to improve your mixes from your home studio, but I wanted to address that comment, so here's a whole bunch of tips, tricks and techniques which I've picked up over the last 25 years working in a home studio. So the first thing I'm going to say, and it's a bit of a bitter pill for all you songwriters out there, me included, is work on good material material, work on good songs, and not every song you work on or you write indeed is going to be a great song, but better material tends to flow so much easier when it comes to mixing uh, and when it comes to indeed production and, and arrangement as well. So work on as good material as you can, train your ear to recognise when a song's not right, train your ear to uh, also accept when songs aren't actually very good, and you will save yourself a whole ton of frustration when it comes to laying your track down. Remember, even if you've done a bad mix, even if you've done a not so good recording, a good song is always a good song and it will always shine through. The next thing is to mix in mono, collapsing down from beautiful stereo into mono really highlights the issues, particularly in the mid-range when you're mixing and a lot of congestion in the areas. If you can translate and get your mono mix coming uh, across really well, by the time you spread it back into beautiful stereo, it's going to sound fantastic. Mixing in mono is also a great way to check for any phase issues in your mix. If you find instruments disappearing when you collapse from stereo to mono, then you want to go back into stereo and check for any phase issues, check for things particular double track guitars. Also finally with mixing in mono you've got to remember that these days so many people are listening back to your music on devices and on phones and on tablets which are going to be playing back in mono. So you want to be making sure that your mono mix is sounding as good as possible. Another good tip is when using uh, your reverb, so uh, utilising your bus channels, which I've spoken quite a lot on this channel about recently. So that's rather than putting lots of separate instances of plugins on each individual track, it's utilising your bus. So you've got one instance of your uh, reverb effect, and then you can create separate sends going to that effect from each individual track. This really helps to give the track uh, a good feel and a good glue that it's all been recorded in the same place, rather than having a lot of confused different reverb tails going off at different times in your mix. It'll save your CPU and it may well bring your mix together and help it to sound better. And spend your time polishing and getting that vocal to translate as well as possible. Nature has designed us with these ears which hone in on the human voice for communication. So that's the real key area of the mix which is going to show up if you've got mistakes and blunders in. So spend your time, get your vocal translating as well as possible and make sure that it comes through nice and clearly in that mix. My next top tip is often overlooked and that's arrangement. That's really easy to overlook in a home studio. If you're working on your own then you're often then writing a song, you're tracking your song and then you're going to leap straight into mixing and kind of jump past that editing and arrangement stage. Now if you listen to some really well arranged songs like Shape of You by Ed Sheeran, lots of early Beatles stuff, Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, you'll see they're quite sparse. There's lots of space in them and they're maximising the instruments within those mixes. So if you've for example got 10 double track guitars and a whole bunch of other instruments thrown in to mix. Not only is it going to be a bit of a headache to mix, but it's going to be really, really hard for you. It's really good at the editing and arrangement stage to ask yourself uh, what instruments need to be at what stage uh, during your song. Is your song building enough? Are you revealing enough to keep your song moving? All of those choices are going to make your mix so much easier when it comes down to sitting and mixing and working on your track. My next top tip is to use and utilise absolutely everything you can to get your song and mix sounding as good as possible. It's quite easy to go down the road of being a bit snobby and muso and saying, well, I'm not going to use autotune or I'm not going to uh, use MIDI instruments. I want to keep everything real as natural as possible. Now, of course, if that's what you're going for, then that's cool. But if your song sounds better, utilising tools that are available, then go for it. Get the sound you want because all of your competitors are absolutely doing the same. 
My next top tip is to utilize tape emulation on your master bus. Now, when I think about it, all my favorite rock and pop recordings were all laid down onto tape. So trying to get there in the digital domain without any help of tape emulation can be really frustrating in a home studio. And there are some great plugins out there that you can get hold of. The two that I use the most are Tone Booster's Real Bus, which is excellent and it's very light on the master bus too. And also the J37 plugin from Waves. Utilizing tape emulation on your master bus can really help to glue your mix together as well as it giving that tapey special source. Another top trick is to utilize the NS10 hack. Now, if you've got one set of uh, monitor speakers like I have in the studio, but you really wanna hone in on that mid-range, much like using NS10 monitors, then you can put a high pass and a low pass filter uh, onto your master bus and squeeze down until you're focused on the mid-range. So from somewhere around 200 hertz, um, to somewhere about 4K, you can roll off on either side. And there you are, you're gonna be right in the zone, focusing in on that all important mid-range. And again, much like the mixing in uh, mono technique, you gotta think, people these days, where are they listening to your music? They're listening on car speakers, and they're listening on earbuds, uh, and they're listening on phones and tablets. All those areas are not really gonna to be too concerned with uh, the top and the bottom, but very much focused on that congested mid-range area. So that's a great uh, tip to get you focused in on that area and get tighter mixes. And my last tip for today is for all you singer-songwriters out there who have got a cruddy bass sat in the corner of your studio that costs you about 50 quid secondhand with like a knackered pickup and some old strings on it and you always record down on it but you never quite get your bass in the right place. Go grab yourself a copy of Ample Bass P. Do yourself a favor. It'll be absolutely free. It sounds superb. You can lay down your bass then on your MIDI um, and it sounds great. You're gonna then have a nice, rich, and full professional sounding precision bass without outlaying any cash for now. And uh, I guarantee you, it will sound a lot more full and make your mix a lot easier when you're dealing with that low end with this plugin rather than messing around with a cheap bass guitar with poor quality strings. And a good quality low end is really gonna make a difference in making your mix sound nice and pro. I do hope you found those tips tricks and techniques useful for getting a better mix. Look out for my How to Make a Better Mix course coming very soon a Real Home Studio. My name's Johnny Good. Please remember to like, subscribe, and have yourself a great day.